what do these laws mean and how can we use them? That's what we're going to talk about today. Hi there and welcome to Team Laika where I try to help you prepare better for your next exam. And this is one of the topics na request ng ilan sa inyo kaya pag-uusapan natin yung laws of radicals na tinatawag. Now we did have an earlier discussion on the laws of exponents so if you haven't seen that video yet, link ko na lang din sa taas so you can catch up. Medyo ko kailangan natin siya dito kasi if you think about it, ang radicals ay exponents din. Kaya lang, they are exponents na fractions. Napag-usapan din natin yan, or our special lesson on special exponents. So, if you haven't seen those yet, nakalink din sila. Right here, we have a list of the four laws of radicals. Huwag muna kayong kakabahan kung medyo nakakatakot yung mga letters, tas itong mga symbols na ito. Let's start with law number one. Ang sabi dito, kung ang index number ng isang radical ay kapareho ng exponent kung saan ito raised, then the answer would be whatever number is nasa ilalim ng payo. Or yung tinatawag nating radicand. To illustrate that, we're going to take this. It's the square root of 16 raised to 2 or squared. Now, kahit walang nakalagay na index number doon sa radical natin, kapag wala kasi nakalagay na number, ang ibig sabihin nun ay square root ang inahanap. And as you can see, pareho yung dalawang number na yan. We have 2 right here, and this 2 right here. Which means, it follows yung format ng ating law, with 16 being our a. So, kahit na hindi ko na siya isolve, kung alam ko yung law na ito, I could simply answer na ang sagot dito ay 16, or yung a, yung number na nasa loob. Now, para masigurado na tama yung sagot natin, isasolve natin to the long way. If we start with the square root of 16, we can actually split 16 into 4 times 4. Or, ang 16 ay actually isang perfect square. Siya ay ang 4 squared. Which means, dun sa loob ng payong, we can just put 4 and then, kopyahin lang natin yung square na nasa labas. We have 4 squared right there. Which would also mean that we would have to multiply 4 by another 4. And again, ang sagot dyan would be 16. And as you can see, pareho naman siya dun sa nakuha nating sagot kanina, kahit na hindi natin ginawa yung buong proseso na ito. The loss of radicals will help you simplify expressions, move things around para may mga makancel o matanggal tayo at mapasimple ang ating ginagawa when it comes to algebra or even higher math. Kaya very important to master these. Now, let's raise the level a little bit. Paano kung ganito? We have a variable sa loob, 2x. Well, pareho lang din yung gagawin natin. Dahil 2 yung nandito, at 2 yung nandito, pareho sila, same as yung nasa sample natin or nasa rule natin. The answer here would be just yung a or yung nasa ilalim ng radical. The answer is 2x. Now again, kailangan pareho yung index number ng radical sa loob at nung exponent na nasa labas ng parenthesis. Law number 2 is a little bit more complicated. Tingnan, mas marami yung mga moving parts, pero madali lang siya. Ibig sabihin lang nun, pwede nating hatiin yung dalawang factors or dalawang variables na nasa ilalim ng isang radical at kopyahin lamang yung kanyang last name, apelido, or kung ano man yung index number at radical na nandun sa original number. So, if we have the square root of 36, one way of looking at it would be by splitting it into the square root of 9 and the square root of 4. Bakit? Kasi 9, 18, 27, 36. 9 times 4 is 36. And then, pwede ko ngayon silang isolve individually. The square root of 9, which is a perfect square, is 3. And the square root of 4, another perfect square, is 2. The answer is 6. Tama ba yung sagot natin? Well, kung gagamitin natin ito ng factor 3, ang 36 ay pwede natin i-split into 
6 and 6. Dito pa lang, pares na sila, which means pwede natin siyang ilabas dun sa payong or dun sa radical symbol, and the answer would be 6. Again, pareho lang. And of course, perfect square din naman ng 36, kaya 6 naman talaga ang sagot. I showed you that kasi paano kung ganito? The square root of 4c squared. Paano ko to isi-simplify? Following yung pattern natin, we can just split this into the square root of 4 and the square root of c. After that, we can look at the square root of 4, which is going to give us 2. And then, the sa right side naman, the square root of c squared would be c. The answer here is 2c. So again, pwede mo paghiwahiwalin yung mga nasa ilalim ng radical or nasa ilalim ng payo. And then solve them individually. Just make sure that you have the index number right. Okay? Law number 3 na tayo. This time, may fraction sa loob or may division na nangyayari sa ilalim ng radical. You have the cube root of 8 over 27. Sounds complicated? Looks complicated kasi may fraction. Pero ang ibig sabihin nito, ang rule na ito or itong law na ito, is we can write this as the cube root of 8 over the cube root of 27. And then, we can deal with them individually. Ang 8 ay perfect cube naman. It's 2 times 2 times 2. Tatlong 2. Which means, pwede natin siya ilabas sa payong as 2. Ang 27 naman, also a perfect cube. Kasi, 3 times 3 is 9. Times another 3 is 27. Pwede natin ilabas sa payong yung 3. So, this right here is actually equal to 2 over 3. Level up natin with some other variables. Now, this right here, we can rewrite as x squared under the square root over over the square root of 4y to the 4th. At dahil nakasulat na siya that way, we can look at them individually. x squared, kung isa square root natin siya, that is just x. Kasi ang x squared ay dalawang x. Magkapare sila, pwede nang ilabas sa payo. This part right here na discuss natin sa simplifying radicals na video ha. Kung hindi nyo pa yung napapanood, ilalike ko na lang din sa inyo. Dito naman sa ilalim, we have the square root of 4y to the 4th power. Now, balikan natin yung rule number 2. Pwede natin itong isulat as the square root of 4 times the square root of y to the 4th. Or, we can even write it as x all over the square root of 4 times the square root of y squared times the square root of another y squared. Pare-pareho lang yan. Kasi ang 4 times y squared times y squared is still 4y to the 4th. Now, this is just illustrating the fact na this is actually x over 2y squared. Bakit 2y squared? Kasi itong 4 na to, magiging 2. Yung y squared, ang square root ay isang y. At yung isa pang y squared is another y. So now you have 2 times y times y or 2y squared. That is our answer. The last one is law number 4. I know, may payong na nga, may payong pa. We're going to copy yung nasa loob ng payong. 16x to the 4th, radical symbol. And then you have 2 times 2, which is 4. Now, dito sa radicand natin na ito, may pwede na tayong gawin. Kasi, again, using yung rule number 2 or yung law number 2, we can split this into the 4th root of 16 times the 4th root of x to the 4th. Now, ang 16 ay 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16. Which means, this right here ay pwede kong isulat as just 2. And yung x to the 4th power naman ay apat na x. Which means, kung akabuo ako ng apat or 4 of a kind, pwede ko siyang ilabas doon sa radical as x. So this complicated mess right here is just 2x. Now it may seem challenging at first to memorize all of these laws and figure out how to use them. But in the long run, kung matututuhan niyo sila, mas mapapadali niya yung buhay natin pagdating sa math. And it actually allows you to be creative and keep trying new things pagdating sa pag-solve ng mga problems. 
Now it's your turn. We're going to have a quick quiz. So if you're ready with your pen and paper, your timer starts now. All right, let's see how you did. Question number one, we have the square root of 100 over 25. Now, sa itsura itsura pa lang, hawig siya nung law number three natin. So, we're just going to split this into the square root of 100 over the square root of 25. Now, ang 100, perfect square naman yan, that would be 10 over 25, which is another perfect square, kasi 5 times 5 is 25, so we'll just put 5 here. So the answer dito is just 2. Again, mukhang complicated, pero actually madali. Now, of course, pwede rin natin gawin na unahin yung 100 divided by 25 para magtaroon na tayo ng square root of 4, which will also give us 2. But as you can see, either way, pareho naman yung sagot. Doon na tayo sa question number 2. Cube root of 8y cubed. Again, we can split this into... The cube root of 8 and the cube root of y to the third power. Now, ang 8 ay 2 times 2 times 2. So, ibig sabihin nun, pwede natin siya ilabas sa payong as 2. And yung y cube naman ay tatlong y. So, pwede rin natin siya ilabas sa payong into just y. The answer is just 2y. Now, so question number 3, law number 4, we look at 5 and 3. We just multiply these and copy the rest. So we have 25a squared. Now, important na, index number is not 5 plus 3. It's 5 times 3 or 15. That is our final answer. Now, I hope you got all three correctly. If you didn't, that's okay. I'll be posting more questions on my Instagram account and my other social media accounts. So don't forget to follow me there. If you want this hoodie right here or some of our merch to help support this channel to make sure that we can keep making free content for all of you, you can go and check it out at shop.teamlaika.com. And of course, if you're interested in getting any of the reviewers that I made, join the online or live review events. You can go to www.facebook.com slash teamlaika to find out kung ano yung best fit for you. Sa inyo lahat who support this channel, who share this with your friends, who follow, subscribe, like the videos, do that so that more people discover our content. Maraming salamat sa inyo. That's it muna for now. As we always say, aja aja, kain yan. I'll see you in my next video and bye for now.